Okay, I'm Rohit. I I'll do this presentation on version control on Linux using Git. Uh, I'm the yeah, I'm an officer with the with the group. So why do we need version control? Uh, so anytime we have worked on a piece of code, we we wanted to make backups to have a history of what we've done. So version control is better than manually taking backups of older versions. And if you're working in a large group, it makes things very convenient for you. And the beauty of it is, it lets you work in parallel on on uh, on maybe even the same piece of code, and then let you merge them back in uh, together, you know, without any problems. And it, it uh, any version control system will maintain a very thorough log of who made changes when and what what did they do, everything. And the last thing that it gives you is a, a very fine-tuned access control. So uh, CVS, SVN, Git, Mercurial, and a bunch of other proprietary tools exist out there. And uh, Git was created by Linus Torvalds, Linus Torvalds, uh, and it, it's different from the others, uh, at least from most of them, because it's distributed. Most of these uh, systems have a central repository where all your changes are stored in the database, and all the log files are stored there. Uh, in, in Git, it's distributed, and we'll talk about that. It's it's open source as class it's class cross platform, and he has a like an hour long talk about why Git is so much better than SVN. Somebody shared it on the group, you know. So uh, the very first time I asked a question on on how to set up SVN, and somebody cut back with a link to that video that uh, you should check out Git. And yeah, it, it actually is just pretty better, you know. It's superior to SVN or other other. So uh, by a distributed VCS, we mean that each user has a copy of the whole repository. We mean each and every change, each and every history, uh, all the source code from scratch. So they can recreate the source code at any given time in the past. So and why is it good? You have multiple copies of the whole repository, so you have uh, additional redundancy. So if your server goes down, you still have backups. Because um, the copy that you have, it, it, it itself is complete. There is nothing, not even a byte missing from what's there on the central repo. So you can always just uh, recreate the whole thing. And since you have all the, the whole thing uh, with you, there is no network traffic you can do. Uh, so if, if I mean, some things take a lot, lot, lot of time if you do it over the network, and this is much faster. You don't have to set up that central server. You can just uh, set up a local Git on your machine and just go on working on that. that that's just pretty good. And uh, and the last thing is um, you can you're free to make commits. So uh, if if you're uh, in a corporate environment, they have a certain uh, requirements that before you make a commit, make sure you're code has certain quality or um, it passes certain tests and you're not able to make commits for your intermediary development stages. So because you have your own copy, you can make any changes you want and then bring the repository in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a better shape and then publish it to the, to the main thing. So that's an advantage. That, uh, that Are the local versions branches or are they just the whole thing. It's the whole thing, including but, but branches. Is it, is, it, is it a Git branch or is it just a, a local cache copy? So, um, I mean, your repo will have a master branch and branches, you know, your development branches, a lot of stuff, but it'll have everything. What happens if Alice and Bob are both editing the same file and then they both try to upload to the central so, repository? Uh, depending on on where on, on where they were making those changes, it might be you know merged automatically, or there might be conflicts, and you'd be asked to merge them. But uh, I mean, if if you're working in a group, you typically have an idea who's working on what piece of code. You probably avoid doing that, like, unless it's an open source thing with you know people working all over the world. That's a different story. But here, I don't think that uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that too much. Those merge conflicts. I'm just. This is like a, a beginner overview to somebody who's never used this before. But yeah, there are ways to work around that.
<coughs> the disadvantages here are since uh, like the whole repository is downloaded the very first time you initialize it. So it could be gigabytes, could be megabytes, but you have to download the whole thing the very first time you, you start using it. And the other thing is uh, you're making all those commits on your local repository. They, they don't just get synced automatically, you know, at the very instant. You have to manually do that. And that delay might not, you know, some people might not like that. Some people might be okay with that. So that's like a personal choice. And is is uh, is it hard to start using Git? If, if you're just a single developer and you just want to maintain versions, backup versions of your code, it's, it's really simple. It's nothing to do, really. You don't have to set up a server. You don't have to have a separate repository folder or anything like that that you need with other things. If you, if you have... Uh, we have a bunch of developers working on something. There are many online services that you know that make it easy for you. If you if it's an open source project project, you can go on Source SourceForge, Google Code, or GitHub. They're free, but only for open source. And for closed source, I've, I've found Assembla and Project Locker. They they have limits on your project size and the number of projects you can host, but they're they're free and they don't you know put your code out in the open. Uh, some I, I think it allows you to yeah to have your private repository. Doesn't doesn't GitHub if you pay for like oh, yeah. the premium you can yeah. put do post source or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, if, if you pay like five dollars a month or whatever, they let you have your private stuff. <clears throat> and you can even get your own server. You know, if if you've got a Linux server running somewhere or. You can even use one of your own machines as as uh, the server. The only problem there would be that it's only accessible when it's on. But it's it's really simple to set up your own thing. And I will go over a couple of terms that uh, we'll come across often. A repository is is like a, a location or a folder where all your code and all its history is going to be stored. And um, we never write to this folder ourselves. It's uh, Git will handle that for us. It'll maintain some databases, some logs, and whatever. We, we don't have to worry about how it's storing our stuff, but it's all stored in the repository. Uh, and in Git, e each and every user will have a repository on his own machine. And we could have one on a remote server. You know. And what's a commit? Uh, anytime you make some definitive changes to your code and you want to, uh, to save them in, in the repository with the history and everything, you commit it, and that's when Git actually uh, makes a record of all your changes, and and it, it, it's recorded. Otherwise, uh, I mean, if if you open your uh, your you know your source code and you make some changes and save it, it doesn't save it. You know, it doesn't go into the version control system yet. It's it's still your working copy. It's just your local changes. You have to commit it to the repository, and that will make the the change and record its history. And we also call, uh, every time you, you commit your code, uh, a snapshot is kind of made because you, you, you have the ability to go back and um, retrieve any previous commit that you saved to the repository. So, um, I mean, you can use it as a noun and refer to a particular commit that you made you know, last year or something. A branch is, uh, it's, it's my definition. It's a sequence of commits leading to a particular code state. So you, you started off with your initial code base, then you kept on making changes, committing those changes. So you uh, form like a linked list. And, uh, so a, it, it's like a branch in a graph. And uh, you could have different branches in your code. You could um, branch off and start working on a different feature. And um, that, that leads to a different version of your code. And uh, convention has it, uh, there's always a branch named master. That's, that's like the main development line. And everybody, uh, you know, uh, like that's, that's supposed to be the stable version of your code. And nobody's supposed to be messing around. You know, if you're just trying out some new stuff, you're not supposed to do it on the master branch. Only when uh, you, you, you uh, fork out a, a, another branch, do all your changes. And if you're satisfied, you merge it back into the master. That's how the development goes. So these are like uh, some examples. 
this is like a, a repository with only a single master branch. The initial commit, then somebody made some changes, some more, some more. And uh, this is the label. Uh, the green box, it's not a commit, it's just a label pointing to the last commit. In this case, uh, after the second commit, somebody uh, created another branch and made two more commits on it, and that branch was called development branch. And this is just a pointer that is pointing to the sixth node. And you can have a bunch of them. So, and um, for example, once you're done with working on, on this feature X branch, you can merge it back into the master branch. Once you're satisfied that these changes are, are good enough to go into a stable version, you just merge. So this is how uh, you, you would uh, organize your workflow, especially in a, in a multi-user environment. And even for a single user environment, it's recommended you create branches before you make changes. And working copy, I already use this term. It's, it's the it's the version of the code that you're actually working on in your editors and everything. So, uh, how do I say? It? Uh, you have some code on on your on your computer, and you also have the repository, but they are not the same thing. The repository is is like a database. It's it's in a format that you cannot see or read or anything. And you have your own source code files that you you wrote that you're going to modify. That's that's called the working copy. And uh, and then you commit it, and then those uh, the new version is saved into the repository database. And another term is unversioned files. So uh, when you're working, um, you might have object files, executables, and other stuff in your directory. Those are not uh, put into version control typically. So no, they would be listed as unversioned files, and it will just keep on coming again and again. So, uh, 